these days, people will put up with great discomfort, go to great expense, and as often as not make utter fools of themselves if it means they can stand out in a crowd. It's always been hard thinking of new ways to do this until, as they say on Tomorrow's World, this device came along. Designed by Gordon Murray, whose past credits include a couple of world championship winning Formula One cars, and ex-racer Chris Kraft, it's built by the Light Car Company and it's called the Rocket. Now it may look like a toy, but it does 0 to 60 in four seconds and it costs 38,000 pounds. So it isn't one. What it does is it merges the style of a Grand Prix car from the 50s with ultra light space age materials. What it is, is just about the most accomplished head turner I've ever driven. I love it! The trouble with today's supercars is they all look pretty much the same if you squint a bit. Well, you'd have to squint rather more than a bit to make this look like anything, really. What we have here is a cross between a motorcycle, a racing car and a, and a thing. The end result is certainly undiluted by creature comforts. Never mind no stereo. <laughs> it doesn't even have a roof or windows and the boot is completely full because I've got a Mars bar in it. <laughs> I can't remember laughing just from driving a car ever before. This is paradise. It's also the rocket at its best. It's like walking down the road flanked by Princess Diana on one side and George Michael on the other. The trouble with Clarkson is he thinks this is just for a cruise. This is a serious motor car. It should be out on the open road. Early morning, no traffic, weak spring sunshine and the countryside just starting to come alive. No need to jostle with other motorists. The simple, pure joy of driving an open car in the open air. While the wind rushed through my hair, I was snug and warm in the draft-free cocoon of the rocket. But of course, the only place to really test a car like this is on a racetrack. And there could be no more appropriate track than Goodwood. Now more airfield than racing circuit, it's still an ideal location for testing. Smooth, high-speed corners where the Grand Prix stars of the 50s and 60s learn their trade in Connaughts, BRMs, Lotuses, Coopers and tiny Formula 3 machines. The style of the rocket is indeed much like the 1962 Lotus of Sterling Moss that left the circuit on this long right-hander and ended his famous career but the sweeps of Goodwood are still a perfect test of a car's suspension and its ultimate cornering performance. Just like those Formula 3 cars of the 50s, the Rocket is powered by a motorcycle engine. But instead of a single-cylinder 500cc unit, we've got a four-cylinder 1,000cc Yamaha engine using its own five-speed gearbox and a chain drive to the special differential which incorporates both low and high ratio. The cockpit is much larger than a racing car. There's even room for someone to sit behind you if you can find a volunteer. But otherwise, the layout is just like the real thing. A bucket seat, racing steering wheel, and a right-hand gear change. With 12,000 revs on offer, the rocket just begs to be driven fast. On the open road, it will idle along in high ratio, happily pulling just 4,000 at 70 miles an hour. On track, it's low ratio and high revs all the way. With 143 horsepower, it has the same sort of power as a 16-valve Golf GTI, but in a chassis that's only about a third of the weight. Indeed, the power-to-weight ratio of the Rocket is not far short of that of an F40 Ferrari. The handling is what you'd expect from a designer like Gordon Murray. Bumps absorbed with ease and corners taken with confidence. The Rocket really has no vices. Light, positive rack and pinion steering gives all the feedback you need and when the limit is reached, it's easily corrected. Gear changes are equally satisfying as the lever is pushed either forwards or backwards to engage the next ratio. 
I could have played all day, but our circuit time was soon gone, and it was time to give back our expensive toy. Brilliant. Jeremy gave it 10 out of 10 for posing. I've got to give it 10 out of 10 for driver satisfaction. You have to admit, it only gets 2 out of 10 for practicality.